We have the NHL draft coming up two weeks from Friday. And to help uh, sort some things out here, we're going to bring in Chris Peters, ESPN's NHL draft analyst. He joins us on MSG 150 Speed Dial, presented by Fios by Verizon. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. You were at the Combine last week in Buffalo. Anybody make a dramatic move up the draft board? Well, you know, it's tough to move up and down at the Combine very much, you know, but, but I think there were some guys that really stood out in terms of if they interviewed well, uh, how they performed at the actual combine. I thought one of the, the real head turners was the top goalie in the draft, Spencer Knight. Uh, you know, a lot of goaltenders not going in the first round anymore. I think he's probable to go in the first round. Going to be a really interesting guy to kind of see where he ends up. Uh, but, yeah, he, he did great at the physical testing. He, he I'm sure he interviewed very well. He's a really uh, a mature kid. But but another guy that really, I think, impressed in the interview portion was uh, Moritz Seider, the defenseman from Germany. Finished his season on an incredible high note, uh, making Germany's national team. Also won a championship in the German Elite League over there. So uh, he's a guy that I think is is very mature, ready to make that jump to North America. And I'll be interested to see if he goes from a, being a, a top 20 guy to maybe more of a top 15 guy based on some of the things I've been hearing lately about him. It's quite a contrast at the very top of the draft at one and two. And it, it is interesting how it's become a debate, and mainly because here in New York it's, it's two of the local teams uh, that, that are picking one and two. And so we keep going back and forth. The more we watched Capo Caco in the World Championships, the more – you thought, boy, he does look like he's ready to play right away. Can you see a possibility at number one where the Devils think to themselves, let's take the ready-made, bigger player, ready to go, as we're watching Stanley Cup Finals teams that are big, or can you just not possibly pass on Jack Hughes? Well, I think that at least Capo Caco has made it a discussion, and, and it's not just the play at the World Championship. It was you know, what he did all year at, at, with, with the Finnish team and in the Finnish Elite League. Uh, only two guys have scored more points than him at that age, and that's Alexander Barkov and Mikhail Granlin, who, who both made the NHL uh, pretty quickly. And, and so I do think he is a guy that could jump right in. Now, for the Devils, the, the, the question is, okay, well, Jack Hughes has all these other tools. You know, he's, he's, he's just an elite offensive player. We think he could change the game. Maybe he's not as NHL ready, although I do think he'll play in the NHL next year. Maybe he's not as, as ready to dominate at the NHL level as perhaps a Capo Caco is. But I think they're looking more at the long term, and I think that Jack Hughes still projects out just a little bit better than Capo Caco. One, he's a center, and, and two, I think he's one of the best play-driving players. He gains the zone as well as anybody, and, and the speed is a huge factor as to why I think Jack Hughes is ahead of Capo Caco, even after everything that we saw at in the fin, in Finland and at the World Championship. I, I think it's it's really tight, but I'm still personally leaning Jack Hughes, and I think a lot of teams are as well. So there's nothing in your mock that you will do. That, like Nothing will change your mock. You will always put Jack first. You always put Hughes first. Is there one thing? I mean, we're getting closer to draft now, but is there anything that could possibly make you say, I'm putting Kako at number one? Not, not at this point, no, because I've watched these guys for the last two years. Uh, you know, and, and really, they're, they're both special players. I mean, that's the thing. The Devils are going to get a, a special player. The Rangers are going to get a special player. Those guys are clearly the top two in this draft. I don't see anybody overtaking either of them. Um, and I think there's a pretty significant gap between those two and the rest of the field. So it, it really just comes down to which special player do you want and where do you feel that you're going to be able to make the biggest impact. I think most teams are going to choose the center in that situation. You know, Chris, the Rangers have had all the attention because in the number two overall pick. But remember, in that trade with Winnipeg, yeah. the Kevin Hayes trade, they get the 20th overall pick, and the Islanders will pick 23rd in the first round. That brings us to our weekly discovery presented by Budweiser Discovery Reserve. And Chris, as we take a look, possibilities here for the Rangers at 20th and the Islanders at number 23. What do you think? Yeah, there's there's a lot of different options. The one thing about this draft, there's no consensus. And that's why, you know, you see kind of a, a wide variety of players on that list there. And I would even throw Spencer Knight, who I mentioned potentially being in that mix at 20 to 25 as well. But I, I think that with what you have there is good defensemen that aren't, you know, among the top end guys, but they're good puck movers. They're guys that can, can play for you. There's a lot of skill there as well. Hoglander from Sweden is an incredibly skilled player, played a lot in the pro league this year. Bobby Brink was one of the top scorers in the USHL this season. A few questions about his foot speed that may affect his draft stock, but that's why I think he'll be there in that range. Uh, an elite playmaker, I think, among players in this draft. 
and, and yeah, there's just so many different options that you have in those those sections. And and one of the guys that I think stands out from that group is Brett Leeson, who's actually a third year draft eligible. He really is a, a late bloomer, and, and you don't often see those guys talked about as first round draft prospects. But he's a much faster skater. He's a big body, and he put up a boatload of points in the WHL and helped Prince Albert win a WHL title this year. So that's why I think he's a guy right in that range that both of those teams could absolutely consider and get a great player. Yeah, big body, six four, over two hundred pounds, and that what. What a contrast on that list, as you saw. There were some guys that are 5'9 and 6'4. It's really amazing how the, the game has changed there, where you, the smaller guys are still now a big part of this game. We did mention the Islanders, though. Do you see a scenario at all where maybe they, they use that pick uh, to make a trade, or do you see them continuing to uh, collect uh, talent? You know, I think if they, if they see a situation where whoever they like most isn't there, I could see them potentially moving it on draft day, maybe moving back in the draft, getting more second round draft picks. But I still think that the Islanders, as good of a season as they had last year, they had a tremendous draft last season. Keep building that prospect pool because as you're trying to start to replace players and guys that are, you know, you maybe can move out uh, with NHL deals, then, then you gotta focus on building that prospect pool. I think they're in a really good spot after the last draft. And, and I don't know that they would necessarily want to change that up, change that approach, because those are the guys that you're going to need when you start paying some of those other players more and more money. You need guys in entry-level contracts, and the best way to get those guys is through the draft. All right, so, Chris, we've talked about the number one overall pick, the number two overall pick. We've talked about some possibilities at 20 through 25. How about number three or number four, some names that might go up really high that are really being overshadowed by the situation with Hughes and Capococco? Yeah, well, that's really where the consensus just falls away. Nobody really knows who's going to be that number three pick. I think that the guy that's the front runner right now is actually the guy that the Chicago Blackhawks are going to find right in their backyard, and that's Alex Turcott, who, who's from the Chicago area. He, uh, his dad, Alfie Turcott, played played professionally for a little while. Uh, Uncle Darren as well, and, and, and his, his grandfather even was involved in the NHL before that. So he's uh, a multi-generational talent uh, from, from his own head own family great playmaker only played half the season because he, he dealt with injuries he even got mono at the end of the season and kind of had to play through the after effects of that at the world under 18 championship uh behind jack hughes he's he was second in points per game on that vaunted u.s under 18 team uh so that's a guy to absolutely keep an eye on uh trevor zegris another u18 player highly skilled very quick um and then all, a couple other guys dylan cousins kirby doc two whl forwards uh, both big centers, six foot three, six foot four, uh, kind of in that range. Uh, Cousins is an explosive skater. Doc's more of a cerebral playmaker. And then the number one defenseman in the draft is Bowen Byram, also out of the WHL. Put up a boatload of points this season. Very offensive-minded defenseman. There's a few concerns about his defensive game, but I like him a lot. I think that he's got a bright future. Uh, he really gets in into the offensive zone a lot, and, and I think there are going to be some teams that are picking in that 3-4-5 range that are going to have to consider him as well. But those are probably the next three, uh, Turcotte uh, and Byram, and then I'd also throw Doc in there with Cousins and Zegers, kind of those next-tier guys that, that you could potentially add in the in the top five, top seven range. So it, it's it's a really good top of the draft this year, and there's there you really can't go wrong with a lot of these guys that are available there. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out our right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.